A ton of shows were interrupted last season because of the writer's strike. There's still a lot of unanswered questions surrounding the crash, and many people want to know, will it ever happen again? However, there are many Republicans that are nervous and waiting to see just exactly what type of change Barack Obama will bring to the United States of America. Today we're going to be talking about natural disasters and what people can do to prepare, what people can do to recover, and what people can do to help. Security is always deep and the crowds are always going wild whenever President Obama comes to town. And nearly 200 fans and concerned citizens camped out overnight, hoping to catch a glimpse of the first president to ever appear on a late night talk show. It's not very often he's in your neighborhood, so I wanted to come out here and see him. All around Jay Leno's studio at NBC, people had a message they wanted the president to hear. And some people spent hours trying to score a ticket to the show. I got to get in there. But not everyone in the crowd was a fan of the president. Obama is most likely not an American citizen and not eligible to be president. And many people wanted to do more than just watch a good talk show. They wanted to hear Obama talk about all of America's problems that still need to be fixed. You know, people are out of work. There's what, in this state, there's 7 million people out of work. What's the point of bonuses? There's, doesn't make sense. The president's appearance on late night television definitely created an air of excitement outside Jay Leno's studio. And it was obvious that many people still believe in Obama's campaign that change is on the way. There are tons of traffic problems in Hollywood, but this year the mayor of Los Angeles will start giving heavy penalties to anyone who blocks the streets during rush hour. A group of parking enforcers and tow truck drivers called the Tiger Team will be unleashed in Hollywood to keep the streets clear. The director of public information for the Los Angeles Department of Transportation says the mayor's new traffic plans will make it harder for drivers to park their cars during restricted hours without getting towed. Where the Tiger Teams are, you know, right away the tow truck's there, right as the ticket's written and your car's gone. That means the Tiger team will be making sure that everyone who parks their car at the wrong place during the wrong time is penalized, with towing fines that cost much more than the average ticket. But if you don't pay attention to those restrictions near your parking spot, you could end up getting your car towed by Hollywood resident Mia Romanek. I was parked on Sunset and Gardner on the corner, and I honestly just didn't read the sign. It was a little too far ahead of me, and uh, I missed it by a couple minutes. The tow yard stored Romanik's car for less than three hours, but leaving her car parked on Sunset Boulevard a little too long still cost her almost $200. Truthfully, once you pay a ticket that size, you read the sign. Parking on Sunset during rush hour also cost this man nearly $200. And the tow truck driver had his car for less than five minutes. They charge you 200 bucks just to get your car up like this and then down. I can't really complain because I'm not supposed to be parked here, but $200 for uh, the car to go up the side and back down, it's pretty wild. And clearing block lanes in Hollywood will continue to be one of the mayor's top priorities. In Hollywood, I'm Talia Hassan for Valley View News. I'm gonna remember you always. People are still mourning the tragic deaths that occurred in the Metrolink train crash in Chatsworth. Hundreds of people attended this candlelight vigil to honor the lives of two victims who recently graduated from Moore Park High. She was like always smiling, she was always happy, she was never sad. <laughs> She's talking about 18-year-old Maria Elena Villalobos a student who was commuting downtown to the Fashion Institute. The vigil was also honoring Aida Magdaleno, a 19-year-old victim who was commuting to her classes at Cal State Northridge. With so many people mourning after this crash, the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health wants to remind everyone that counseling is a great way to get through their pain. There's been a, a huge emotional impact on people. And the best thing that helps people get over this tends to be talking about it. Many people avoid counseling and try to cope in other ways. Just let us talk with like amongst friends. our friends. It'll be easier for us to talk to our friends than to somebody we don't even know. But the mental health department also wants people to understand there's nothing wrong with talking to a professional too. People feel that there's a stigma because it says mental health. But really it's about um, taking care of yourself. 
The Metrolink connects thousands of people to places like work and school. But getting back on the train after such a tragic accident isn't easy to deal with. There's still a lot of unanswered questions surrounding the crash, and many people want to know, will it ever happen again? So the county's Department of Mental Health is making sure that people know counseling can help them sort through the confusion. It's free, it's easy, and it's nothing to be ashamed about. The L.A. County Department of Mental Health has a 24-hour hotline with a special staff ready to serve anyone affected by the Chatsworth train crash. I'm Talia Hassan for Valley View News. Young models, young actors, and young rappers. Jobs in the entertainment industry are so popular, millions of kids want to become the next superstar, the next American Idol. I've been thinking about being a singer or an actor. I want to be a former singer slash actor. So rapper Kanye West and his mother, Dr. Donda West, created free entertainment classes for kids in low-income neighborhoods. And they also created a program that's helping kids stay in school. They started this program because Kanye West was a college dropout. The program's called Loop Dreams, and it's at Challengers Boys and Girls Club in South Los Angeles. Now, it's been a year since Kanye's mother died unexpectedly after a tragic cosmetic surgery in November 2007. But before she died, she made sure she created a program kids couldn't resist. From the first day I met her, all she talked about was kids being having hands-on training. She didn't want a program that they would just be sitting in a classroom and feeling like a classroom setting. She wanted, to, she wanted it to feel like a studio. And the studio atmosphere is definitely catching kids' attention. You know, I'd be great to be can be in loop chains, and so that helps me want to get better grades. Kanye, when he came here, he was really concerned about the kids staying in school, getting good grades, and, um, and continuing their education. Many of the students say if Kanye and his mother didn't start this program in South L.A. We have to buy all of this equipment. Yeah. It costs like thousands of dollars. And many people like this shoe designer who used to go to Challengers are saying... Now that Dr. Donda West is gone, it's up to Kanye West to make sure her dreams are not forgotten. So it's very important that, you know, that doc, you know, Dr. West's vision lives on through her son. For Valley View News, I'm Talia Hassan. Colorful art displaying the AIDS epidemic is catching the attention of several people at UCLA's Fowler Museum. The opening night of Make Art, Stop AIDS featured artwork from four countries, including India and South Africa. And many pieces in the exhibit highlight how millions of people are struggling to get condoms and AIDS vaccines. The art show gives people an opportunity to learn more about AIDS in an interesting way. A live DJ featured on the opening night was spinning music from around the world. This turned out to be a fun way to entertain the crowd as they learned about the painful issues surrounding the AIDS epidemic. But the modern glamour of the event did not cause people to overlook artwork like this one, which was created by two men living with HIV in the United States. This piece is called Medicine Man. We've been saving our um, HIV medication bottles for 15 years. If you look at the labels, a lot of them are all different medications. When we were putting this piece together, I would say, I would look at a bottle and go, oh God, that was, that was the one reaction. that made my hair fall out. You know, that was the yeah. one that made me crazy. Some of the event's curators were extremely impressed with all of the art that used condoms to promote safe sex. I have a, a special affinity with a, a pink couture gown. It's a gown that from a distance looks like something that could be worn at the Oscars. But when you get up close, you realize that it's been made of hot pink, uh, deeply dyed condoms. The Make Art Stop AIDS exhibit at UCLA is making one thing very clear. Artists have a special way of making the pain and struggles of millions of AIDS victims unforgettable. In Westwood, I'm Talia Hassan for Valley View News.